Bert Newton. Everything I do, I do for Bert. Good morning, everybody. Everything I do, I do for Bert. Boop, boop, a do. Some may think Bert's not much, but they like his gentle touch. Everything I do Just between me and you Everything I do I do for the bad Good morning on this, the 11th of August, 1978 And welcome to the morning program on the Greater Of Superman a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. Uh, he was created by two gentlemen, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. By an actual fact, uh, talked about him and, uh, and started him on his career when they were teenagers. But he, he didn't really uh, get a big start until 1938, 40 years ago uh, this year, June 1938, when he made his debut in print in a 10-cent comic book. Uh, incidentally, a, a copy of that comic now is worth $3,500 to, uh, to collectors. Superman has almost um, become a, a nationwide favourite uh, on radio in almost every English-speaking country in the world. Certainly here in Australia, it was uh, more than a successful radio. It's become... For radio buffs, one of the uh, one of the most sought-after radio serials in America, likewise. In the States, on radio, Superman was played by Bud Collier. Uh, here, of course, in Australia, by Leonard Teal, and we'll be talking to Leonard later uh, this morning. Internationally, uh, his biggest breakthrough, meaning Superman, was in two Columbia movie serials starring an actor called Kirk Allen, who hardly worked after making these serials. Uh, although there'd been a series of animated cartoons prior to the serial, uh, the serials really got him uh, started on the international level. In the early 1950s, the first of a television series was made starring the late George Reeves as Superman. George Reeves suicided in 1959. He died at his Benedict Canyon home after excusing himself to his fiancée and some guests who had called in late to his home. Uh, his fiancée, uh, Lenore Lamond, remarked to the guests as George excused himself to retire, he's probably going to kill himself now. Moments later, a shot rang out through the house, and uh, 45-year-old George Reeves lay sprawled across uh, his bed, a German Luger in his hand. Although he'd, uh, he'd not donned the famous costume and cape for some years, the headlines next morning in big, bold black type were, Superman commits suicide. And still to this day, there are many people who believe he suicided by jumping from a window, which is not true. He died on June the 17th, 1959. People are still divided today in their opinions uh, regarding uh, George Reeves' death. Some believe it was undoubtedly the inescapable typecasting of Superman that drove him to his eventual death. Others say that he spent a, a good deal of his time writing scripts and had more acting offers than he could accept at the time of his death. And they, they link a car accident just weeks before to his, uh, to his eventual suicide. Now, as I say, this morning we'll be speaking with Noel Neal, who played Lois Lane, and Jack Larson, who played Jimmy Olsen. And perhaps they have the answer. It's 19 and a half minutes to 10 o'clock. I have Lois Lane on the line, Miss Noel Neal. Hello, Noel. Hello, Bert. How are you? I'm just fine. How are you? Oh, just fine. This is such a pleasure. I'm totally thrilled talking to you. Well, we didn't realize just how much success we'd have when we tried to track you down, and I'm absolutely thrilled that you're able to, to give us your time. How does it feel to have completed yet another uh, episode in your life with your... With your love affair with, uh, with that great character, Superman. <laughs> well, it's wonderful, Bert, and of course it was a great thrill for me to be in the movie. 
and hopefully it will be released in December. I'm still doing college shows, but uh, playing in the movie was really, really quite a thrill for me. Well, having a look at your daughter in the movie, uh, are you happy as her mum, uh, how she turned out? Oh, she was very cute, a very sweet little thing, and of course the grown-up Margot Kidder is just a fantastic uh, girl, and I think she's making a great Lois Lane. No, a little jealous, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Well, of course, nobody would know the character of Lois Lane better than yourself. When did she first enter into your life? Actually, Bert, it was in uh, 1948. Very few people know or remember that there were 30 chapters of serials made for movie houses in 48 and 50, and I played Lois Lane in those. And then in 53, I joined the television group and went on to make 78 of the half-hour shows for TV. So I've been uh, identified with her for just about 30 years. Well, of course, in the in the serials, you played opposite Kirk Allen, didn't you? Yes, right, Bert, right. And then into the uh, into the television series with the late George Reeves. Uh, right. Uh, I think, uh, is, am I right in saying that Kirk plays uh, Lois Lane's father in the film? Uh, yes, we played uh, the husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Lane, and Lois, of course, in our scene, was a child of about eight years old. So we played the mother and father of the very young Lois Lane. And it was quite interesting. We went up to Calgary to do the shooting. And then in London in October, I did get a chance to meet uh, Margot Kidder and Christopher Reeve, who, of course, is playing Superman. And he's certainly a handsome, handsome, talented man. And I think we'll just we'll thrill everybody. Noel, it must have been an unusual feeling for you to have rested uh, for so long from the Superman series, and then all of a sudden to find yourself part of it again. You must have had a real feeling of deja vu. <laughs> exactly. I guess it was the nostalgia that was started actually in the colleges that sort of um, brought me back up out of the great unknown. And for the, about the last four years, I have been doing various college shows, mainly in the East, and on the uh, Superman show, of course, running film and have scripts with me. And it's, um, as I say, it's my great ego trip to go on a college show. Noel, it, it's been reported that uh, the role of Superman uh, took mentally a, a lot out of people like uh, Kirk Allen and, uh, and George Reeves. Of the two, uh, who was your closer friend? I, oh, definitely George Reeves. Mm -hmm. Because we did work together over a greater span of time. And I think once getting into, even though television was rather in its infancy at the time, I think we might have realized that, you know, we had something going there. You would work together a few months and then get a few months or a year off, and then they would call and say, okay, we're going to do another 26. So you kept up a longer relationship, and I would say we did more uh, together as far as... Um, Oh, the family group, you know, with the uh, scenes, more dialogue, and I was more more involved in the series than I was in the serials, I would say. Noel, do you think that playing Superman uh, contributed to, to George Reeves' death? I, I really don't, Bert. I do know that um, George would like to have... I, I really think if he had it to do over again, he possibly would have passed up that role and continued on in movies. He had made a great start uh, during the war and then got involved in this and was, was uh, definitely tight. But I don't think it depressed him mentally. We had another 26 episodes that we were to do in 1959, and George was going to direct half of them. He had directed about four of our last ones, and I think he possibly would have gotten into more of that. But, of course, he, as far as working in other movies, I believe it would have been quite impossible. Of course, he made a most auspicious uh, debut, didn't he, appearing in the greatest film that, is, uh, that has been made, Gone with the Wind. Uh, true, true. And he did some uh, other quite good movies. He worked with uh, Paulette Goddard and So Probably We Hail and many other in the Paramount days, and I believe that George, you know, could have kept on as a, possibly a second 
leading man if he hadn't gotten into the Superman situation. But he was uh, basically a very good actor that I think uh, too many people overlook that. Also, too, uh, just moving away from uh, the late George Reeves for a few moments, there's another another particular uh, character in America who has been in films of, of reasonable quality, films like An American in Paris, Here Come the Waves, uh, The Big Clock, and Blue Dahlia. Oh, aren't you nice? Thank you, Bert. <laughs> yes, actually, George and I were both at Paramount Studios about the same time. Uh, we Our paths never crossed, but... Uh, it was about the same vintage, and I was lucky enough to work about three and a half years at Paramount. And uh, then we all did the usual uh, westerns, of course, and I get stills occasionally from little people throughout the country for autographs, and I say, oh, my heavens, that's me on a horse. <laughs> I've just I've just finished reading a book um, which is called To Be Continued, which is a um, a biographical deal on all the serials made in uh, in Hollywood from start to to finish. And you're pretty close. I, I won't say that you were in the first serial because that would be untrue. But you were certainly in the in the last couple of serials to be made in Hollywood, weren't you? Uh, yes, yes. That was just about the uh, finish. Somebody just uh, sent me that book not too long ago. And I had done a couple of other serials before the Superman, uh, names of which I can't even remember, although one was a Flash Gordon uh, type um, uh, Flash Gordon serial. But um, you usually made those so fast that, uh, and being a girl, they were mostly, um, uh, the men had the best part, shall we say, and uh, you kind of ran in and out and you would be saved and then thrown away, and that was about it. <laughs> But the serials were always the great money makers for the big studios. Their uh, movies, maybe some didn't do as well as they should, but the little serials they ground out and the B movies just uh, kept all that money, you know, pouring into the coffers. Mm -hmm. You did the adventures of Frank and Jesse James, didn't you? Right, right. I had totally forgotten about that, Bert, until somebody did send me a picture of, of Clayton Moore and myself, and I said, oh, my heavens. <laughs> Oh, so many years ago, you kind of forget. You remember the horses, but not the leading men. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just going through the book, you know, you realize that the serials had their own star system, too. And also, uh, there were so many people who obviously made a full-time living from it. I, I keep seeing a name called Jack Ingram, which keeps bobbing up in almost every serial. Yes, they were. Uh, there were a certain group of men who played, um, well, character actors, heavies, and they would be, you would just run into them almost every movie it seemed you would do. They would be what they laughingly call themselves the stock company. Mm -hmm. And they would just work and work and work and work. And it was wonderful for them. As you say, it was like a, um, a little proving ground and a uh, stock company situation. Mm -hmm. Well, they were people that the uh, producers and directors in shooting pictures very quickly, they could depend on them you know, as far as dialogue and action, and they knew they could usually do things in one take or two at the very most, which counts a lot when you're working on a very limited budget. Noel, the uh, the actor who played uh, Perry White, John Hamilton, has passed away, hasn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. what... uh, Mr. Hamilton passed away in 57, just after we had uh, concluded the last of the film show. Mm -hmm. In the uh, up-and-coming, or the... The 26th we were going to do in 59, they were going to replace him uh, with a Pierre Watkins who actually had done John Hamilton at one time, I mean had played Perry White, and it was going to be a brother situation and uh, John Hamilton would be on vacation theoretically and his brother was going to run the Daily Planet and maybe just a few little voice overs, you know, with somebody that had a voice like John Hamilton, that would, is going to be, or was, how they were going to replace John in the series. And of course there was somebody else very important to the series, and later this morning I'm talking to him, Jimmy Olsen. Oh, Jack Larson. Jack has gotten into writing almost avant-garde type situation. He does short stories, plays, librettos. Several of his poems have been set to music and danced by the Joffrey Ballet. And he's done just uh, wonderful, wonderful things, Bert. I do talk to Jack quite often. He lives not far from me. And he is um, uh, very happy. It was something he always wanted to do, and fortunately he has been successful. Noel, 
Did you make a lot of money out of the uh, the Superman television 